Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Before we begin, let me wish everyone Eid Mubarak. And also, there's an important announcement from UPSC, and it has been confirmed that the prelims, which was scheduled for 27th of June, has been postponed to the 10th of October in the light of the pandemic. So I request you to please make note of these changes and prepare accordingly. So with this, let's get started with the daily quiz for today. The first question. The Bolshevik Party and its revolution was concerned with which country? France, Russia, Venezuela, Turkey. The correct answer is option B, Russia. This question has been taken up because the 100 years ago article in the Hindu makes a reference to Bolshevism. The Bolshevik Party of Russia was a radical far left wing party that was inspired by revolutionary Marxism. It was founded by Vladimir Lenin and the others. And the party was largely made up of the proletariat class or the working class. And the members were referred to as the Bolsheviks. This party played a key role in the Russian Revolution and the Russian Civil War that stretched between 1917 and 1923, during which the Tsarist autocracy was replaced by the Communist Soviet Union. In February 1917, the Tsar regime had been overthrown and it had been replaced by a provisional government. This provisional government was later overthrown by the Bolsheviks through the October Revolution and eventually led to the formation of Communist Soviet Union. Let's look at the second question. Which states or union territories are involved in the Kaveri River dispute? Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Puducherry, Andhra Pradesh. The correct answer is option C, 1, 2, 3 and 4 only. See, to answer this question, you should be familiar with the river basin of Kaveri that stretches across Karnataka, parts of Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Puducherry. These are the four riparian states and union territories that were involved in the Kaveri river dispute, which finds a mention in this 50 years ago article in the Hindu. Now let's look at the third question. What is the Iron Dome of Israel? A sacred religious site which is revered by both Palestinian Muslims and Israeli Jews an advanced cyber weapon developed by Israeli intelligence to target Iran's critical infrastructure, a mobile all-weather air defense system designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells, Israel's naval blockade of Gaza Strip to deny essential supplies to Hamas militants in the Gaza Strip. The correct answer is option C. The Iron Dome of Israel is an advanced all-weather air defense system that has been developed to intercept and destroy the short-range rockets and artillery shells that are fired by Hamas militants into Israel from the Gaza Strip. This question has been taken up in the context of the Israel-Palestine clashes that have broken out, which we covered in detail in our yesterday's analysis. As tensions have escalated between Israel and Palestine, Hamas militants from the Gaza Strip have been firing hundreds of rockets into populated areas inside Israel. And to defend against this aerial threat, Israel has developed an advanced air defense system known as the Iron Dome. It is basically an automated all-weather mobile air defense system and it consists of a sophisticated radar network, a tracking and command control unit and a launcher. This air defense system is capable of automatically detecting the launch of rockets and artillery shells from the Gaza Strip and immediately the tracking and command control center starts tracking the projectiles and predicts their path and if these rockets and artillery shells fired by the Hamas militants, if it is headed towards populated areas, then the anti-missile battery system launches a few intercepting missiles, which approach the incoming rocket and then detonates close to it, thereby destroying the incoming projectile by causing minimal damage to people on the ground. This is said to be a highly effective air defense system, and it can take on multiple rockets that have been fired simultaneously from across the Gaza Strip. During the latest round of clashes, hundreds of rockets have been fired by Hamas militants as a retaliation against Israel's provocation in East Jerusalem. And following these rocket launches, the Iron Dome system has been activated, which has been defending Israel against these attacks. However, this again is not a foolproof system because even this can get overwhelmed if there are hundreds of simultaneous rockets that have been fired from the Gaza Strip. And yesterday, the Iron Dome has missed a few rockets which have landed in populated areas and some of them have even hit an energy pipeline in Israel. Now let's move on to the fourth question. 
which of the following statements are correct the index of industrial production or iip is compiled and published monthly by the national statistical office under the ministry of statistics and program implementation iip represents the status of production in the industrial sector for a given period of time as compared to a reference period of time both the statements are correct option c is the right answer see iip which is brought out every month by the national statistical office it represents the status of production in the industrial sector for a particular given period of time as compared to a base year which is 2011 2012 it helps in measuring industrial growth in a particular given period as compared to a reference period this question has been taken up because we have an article in the hindu which makes a reference to the index of industrial production and the national statistical office according to this article india's cpi based retail inflation has slowed down to a 3 month low of 4.29% for april and parallelly the industrial output as measured through the iip has surged by 22.4% for march now let's take up a question from the 2017 prelims paper the terms event horizon singularity string theory and standard model are sometimes seen in the news in the context of observation and understanding of the universe option a is the right answer terms such as event horizon and singularity are used in the context of black holes whereas standard model refers to a universal model and string theory is used in the context of quantum mechanics or quantum physics all of which are related to the observation and understanding of the universe now coming to the fact of the day let's talk about the sovereign gold bond scheme which has been mentioned in this press release from the ministry of finance the finance ministry has decided to issue a fresh batch of sovereign gold bonds for the year 2021-22 and accordingly the details of the scheme have been brought out by the finance ministry through this press release see these sovereign gold bonds are essentially issued by the rbi on behalf of the government of india these bonds are basically government securities which are denominated in grams of gold those who buy these bonds or invest in these bonds they are not possessing physical gold and these bonds are not a substitute for holding physical gold instead it helps in reducing the demand for physical gold and shift domestic savings that is the money that the public would have saved for buying gold into financial savings which in turn would be available for banks and the government for carrying out investments back into the economy this sovereign gold bond scheme was launched in november 2015 and investors can buy these bonds in cash and they can redeem it again in cash these bonds provide an opportunity to the investors to gain from the rise in gold prices which essentially translates to capital gains during the time of redemption at the completion of maturity of the bond scheme and along with that the investors also get a fixed rate of interest on their investment throughout the tenure of the scheme and this interest would be paid by the government since the breakout of the pandemic there has been large scale disruption in the economy and whenever there is such economic volatility investors usually rush towards gold investments as a hedge and hence the government of india has accelerated the sovereign gold bond scheme since last year in order to provide an opportunity for the investors to move away from physical gold and instead invest in these gold bonds which will not only bring better returns to the investors but also creates a ready pool of funding for the government thereby reducing its need for borrowings from the market so with this let's conclude our discussion for today thanks for watching